Welcome to Open Whispers channel. Kindly remember to subscribe, hit the alert like button, click on the bell sign to enable you get notified whenever we upload a new video. Share the video also so that um, your friends, family and everybody will be part of this conversation of a new world order that we are going into. Um, as we continue for now to focus on Nigeria and um, their dirty politics going on, I welcome you to the arena with Chris Diggers. When the whisper of a people that has been secret turns to open whispers, the tyrants know that there is fire on the mountain. The people or the masses of Nigeria have whispered secretly for too long. Who will hear their whispers? They have been neglected, relegated to the background for too long. Politicians use them at will, lie to them, dump them when they can, and only give them crumbles from the main food. And the people being hungry will always struggle for those pitians. It's one election to the other. Those lies never come to pass. Those lies never turn to realities. The people's dream always are shattered on the sharp rocks of reality. Sooner than later, they realize that they have been misled again. But be you think. Bear in mind that without the cooperation of the people, these selfish elites will not succeed in holding them to ransom. It is time Nigerian masses take their destiny into their own hands. As 2023 general election draw closer, the main political parties in Nigeria are at it again. We'll dwell into that in a different section. But let me say this though, that the main op uh, opposition party in Nigeria, People's Democratic Party, PDP, they are on a path that I call self-destruct or self-destruction. Selfish politicians are insisting it must be their way or nothing. APC, the party in power has just held the National Convention and kudos to them they manage their crisis well. But the problem brewing in the main opposition party is like a pregnant woman who is not sure of what the baby will be. If that crisis is not managed well, PDP will not smell power for the next 16 years. Put it on the record. Welcome to the arena once again. In our last video we talked about the former governor of Anambra State Willie Obiano and those who leaked the video of um, his travels in the hands of the ESCC. Personally I believe that that was politically motivated. We're not dwelling or diving into whether he is wrong or guilty of corruption in the way he managed the financial dealings of Anambra State. That's not what we're going into because since the case is, uh, the case is already before a competent court of jurisdiction in Nigeria, we will not dwell on that. But my fear then was, how could he have finished his eight year in office and never waited for a day or an hour to get out of the country? He was arrested at the airport. But today, from the whispers in the arena, we are gathering that he actually obtained permission or clearance that he was going on a delayed medical checkup abroad. A checkup that was delayed because he wanted to hand over to the governor elect then, Professor Charles Toledo himself. 
I had an medical emergency. And I said, okay, that makes sense. Because where will he be running to? He's not, I mean, I know he's a smart man. For him to, if knowing that he was, or he has been on ESCC's watch list, why will he try to escape? That he emerged from the whispers that he got traveling clearance. But still, in my opinion, or the opinion of Open Whispers, because I think that his arrest, I'm not talking about corruption or not, that his arrest was politically motivated. Otherwise, why would somebody, the powers that be, clear him to travel and still go ahead to arrest him or to embarrass him at the airport? It's a question that has left me baffled. But the consolation I had, I still have, is that I know that Nigerian politicians are not good losers. Whoever is after that man leaked that or motivated the leakage of that video footage to the public to embarrass that man. Well, the good thing is he will have his day in court. The most importantly is the cost of the people. If he man mismanaged the finances of Anambra State, history will not forgive him. If he did well, history will be kind to him. But uh, it leads us to the bigger picture of the Southeast. Is Southeast blessed or cursed? Because it seems, it seems like after the tenure of great governors like Sam Mbakwe of Imo State, Jim Woburu of the then Anambra State, it's like he has never been well with Southeast. Each past governor has been bedeviled with accusation of corruption. And when you look at it, actually, the question is if your hands are clean, why would you be messed, be caught in that mess that you tried or you dipped your hand in the cookies jar that belonged to the people? Why? Let's start from Abia State. You all will agree with me that in the entire southeastern states, at their state, apart from the fact that they are oil producing state, if my information is correct, it has been one corruption case or the other. Let's start from Ojo Zakalo, the man who is running for presidency today. His case is still with the AFCC of seven point something billion, allegedly stolen from the covers of Abia State, and the state has re has remained underdeveloped. After him, Tioda Oji. His case is still with the AFCC. Of stealing more than 100 billion of the people's fund. Then the present administration in Nigeria State has done little or nothing from the feelers we are getting to improve the lives of the common man of Nigeria State. No concrete development. If you go to Aba, it's the same decay. You go to Umaya, it's not even better. All you see is us painted roads. The common man in Abia State still lives be below the poverty rate. You go to Imo State, you will agree with me that if anybody wants to deceive you, they will tell you all is well in Imo State. You will agree with me that all is not well. Start from Rocha Sokorocha, the man who is running for presidency today in Nigeria. His case is still before the EFCC. What about Ohakim? His case is still with the EFCC. It's one corruption saga or the other. But if your hands are clean, I don't think anybody would drag you before the EFCC. Because I still remember that in Anambra, I've not had anybody drag me to EFCC. 
apart from recently that he was called to answer one or two questions about the uh, the offshore fund. What about the Enugu State? Chimaru Kendamani was, I mean, bundled, harassed by the EFCC on the same accusation as Tolu Fund from Enugu State. The only man that I know that from the field that really tried to follow the legacy of Jim Wobodo is Sullivan Chima, in my opinion. Because it is not just saying, I saw it, that that man constructed rural roads. Even Enugu had a new face. I remember the, the contractors, it was the Arab contractors. They did a good job. Enugu became the city that it's supposed to be. And if anybody tells you that, to be honest with you, that the current governor of Enugu State, Ubuani, if I tell you that I, I really can place my finger on what the man is doing in Anambra in Enugu State, I'll be a liar. The only thing I'm, I'm always hearing is that he's a peaceful man. He carries everybody along. And you know what that means, in my opinion. When you share money to stake, uh, stakeholders, you become the darling governor of them. But what about the people? I still remember that the four corner road that Sullivan Chibe constructed, that road is in decay. I know Suka Road has been constructed, but what about the Night Man Road? Even though it's Federal Road, I was thinking that by now, that road would have been constructed. Because the current Federal Administration, from Abinishu, I think they welcome the idea that you do the state road with the state fund and you do the federal road, then you go and put your claims. If it's justifiable, they pay. So I don't really know from anybody who knows you, call us or send us email, openwhispers at gmail.com. We are also on Twitter, we are on Facebook. Those that share comments, let us know what exactly is going on in Enugu State. I cannot place my finger on the developmental strides of the current administration in Enugu State. Then you go to Anambra. I will say that Anambra has been blessed since in Gige liberated Anambra State. P.O.B. came on board and followed the footsteps of Ngige in constructing roads, improving on education, and a lot of things. Now, we are back to where we started. This corruption thing. Obiano is being accused of massive corruption during his term as the henchman in Anambra State. I keep praying, I hope it's not true. But for the current administration of Charles Soludo to say on national TV that only 300 million or 400 million was left for him and the debt of more than 109 billion leaves a lot of questions to be answered leaves a lot to be answered so the question i'm asking everybody is this what is wrong with southeast this is why i don't agree with people agitating presidency this or that that is not the problem of the southeast those who have been in charge of the southeast since after Mbakwe, Jim Woburu. What have they done with the resources of the people? I remember these people were in charge. When Abia was still under Imo State, Ebony was still, Ebony, I think Ebony and Anambra, they were still under Imo State. They were still together and on Anambra. And did, did uh, Jim Woburu did the water, road, everything. What is wrong with this generation of leaders in Southeast? Charles Soludo, you are now in charge. We know that probably you have what is called paucity of fund, but that is no excuse. The great leader is a person who creates something out of nothing. You've started. Know the difference between when you were campaigning and when you are now in charge. Nigerians don't give second chance. People are able to dilly him between forgiving uh, 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 Will if he did anything wrong and backing him because he built some concrete things. 
that will be left 75 billion has been forgotten because Obi are not built the international cargo airport in Umule in Anambra State. That is what people see. He was able to pay salaries. That is what people hear and see. How fast are you in delving into some developmental projects without continuing with tap meetings? You have called back workers to ignore sit at home on Mondays. Kudos, good job. But I hope we have put the security apparatus in place to make sure that people who obey laws don't suffer as the case is always uh, in Nigeria. Because people who obey, obey laws are not, they suffer, they are the people that suffer. It's a country where there are two laws, one for the rich and one for the poor. For the poor man in other state that will obey that or other, what if he is killed? So I like you are taking in charge and you have, that shows authority. But make sure this is not grandstanding, that you have done your own negotiation with the people who are perpetrating this crime in Anambra. I know they are not IPOP. IPOP lost control long ago. Criminals have taken have taken charge. And if anybody says that all is well with Southeast, that person must have his head examined. He must show leadership of talk and do. Time for campaign is gone. Time flies. Before you know it, four years is over. You must hit the ground running. I say it again. You must hit the ground running. And prove people who think that every leader of Southeast steals money. You've been a governor of Central Bank. The only one is on you to prove that you have the mirror that will show the difference. This is Open Whispers. Be well, do good work, and please keep in touch. Thank you.